Hello everyone, welcome back to another Age of Empires commentary. I am Beyond, and as always, thank you so much for the support in the past couple videos and the channel as a whole. If you are enjoying the content, please do subscribe and please do drop a like on the video. Let's get right into this introduction. Today we have a very special gameplay for you guys today. Today we have 3DB in the blue as the Chinese down on the bottom side of the map. And up top as the Rus, we have Lucifron. This gameplay is from the EGC uh, Elite Classic, as you can see the logo down below here in the, uh, I'm putting my little mouse over it. Um, now you can go check out this game. I was lucky enough to cast two days of this uh, on the B stream. Uh, so it's been an incredible tournament and honestly an incredible experience uh, so far. Uh, big shout out to EGC, Presti, Liticor, the whole group. It's been absolutely fantastic. And I couldn't thank them enough for uh, what they've done for the scene and, and honestly for me. I had an absolute blast. Now this is from this past weekend. I was not able to cast any of these. Unfortunately, I was out of town, but you guys didn't notice that because I uploaded videos every day anyways. A little pre-recorded action for you all. Now... This matchup in the tournament we've been seeing in a ton, Roos is uh, in a very good spot right now. They're probably the best Sif behind the Malians at the current moment, but the Chinese are right behind them on their heels. So this matchup usually goes into that late game. We usually see a few TCs from each player. We definitely get to cast late and sometimes we get to Imperial. The Chinese player tends to be a little bit more turtly and the Roos player definitely tends to move out on the map a bit more, mainly because, um, as we can see, look at that, we got, all right, we do have the, um, uh, we do have the next stage uh, bounty done for loose run. But, um, so it tends to be a little bit more turtle-like, but B, on the other hand, um, is a very aggressive player. And I was going to say the Roos tend to be a bit more aggressive because of those early knights. We usually see 2TC into those early knights, plus with some backup of those archers. And for the Chinese defense, we have the none other than the Shuganu. Um, if you haven't played against them, then you are very, very fortunate or just haven't played ladder in a while. Um, if you have played against them, you know how oppressive they are it's incredibly important to get that plus one armor because shoot shoot new shoot in three bolts so each bolt counts as a hit so range armor essentially is it three times as effective against a shoot new mass than it would be against your normal archers so it's in super important for lower level players guys if you are playing a chinese player get that range upgrade a range defense level one it's incredibly incredibly important and it will make your life a whole lot easier i promise we have the imperial academy going down for b in a nice safe little spot right next door uh interesting to see where he's gonna put the barbican up this time around um we could see it be placed here but not really because there's a wall over here probably protecting these two gold over here i would like it to be here um, or out here, but there's also a good chance it goes right in here. So we'll see where B decides to place that. The Kremlin is in also in a decent spot, gets a bunch of influence around these two camps, also protecting this gold. Now, if you guys don't know, which I'm sure you do, but these Kremlins pop out Gremlins, AKA Militia, AKA Terrors. They are the Terrors of the map because they sprint across Early on, uh, it just costs some food to pop them out, and they start to harass the the wood line, gold, anything you like. I will say, B did a great job at getting all those sheep, which actually can play a pivotal role in this matchup. Get those Imperial officials onto this early mill. That's super important as a Chinese player. So guys, if you're not doing that, make sure you do. Thank you, B, for scouting that out. Now, these guys are absolute menaces. Here they are, you can levy militia for 40 food, and instantly you have two militia on the map causing immediate damage. We have the stable coming down. No surprise here for Lucifron. We're gonna see those early knights, and I wouldn't be surprised to see if we see an archery range pop down eventually as well. Now I will say, Lucifron is pretty low on food, so something to look out after. Where are these, where are these, where are these heading? Where are you guys going? 
Are you going to drop down a mine over here? Yep. Okay. So we're going to be seeing an early TC, second TC for the Roost player. As we pretty much expected, instead of a knight, we see some early horsemen. Great for that early map control, getting those scouts off the map. We saw that B decided to go two scouts this game to counteract that um, bounty as much as humanly possible. Um, but I don't think it really stopped Lucifer from getting at least into that next step, as you can see with the hunting cabin doing good work, at least in that first tier, getting that early wheelbarrow. There's a the barbican. We it's a little bit outside, um, even protecting this deer pack over here and providing. So I'm sure that um, B's going to throw up a wall right through here to force them into the barbican, and then he can easily wall off this section over here as well. So e pretty good defendable position here from B, which I definitely do like. Um, we have this early horseman on the map, but that's the only thing out and about right now. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if we see B move over to the stone outcropping over here, pick up some stone as he's going to need a second town center very soon. But Song Tynesty is pretty uh, good at pumping out villagers. As you can see, 15 seconds for the Song Dynasty villagers. And how much over here, if you guys remember, because I do this comparison all the time with every civilization that gets a bonus, 20 seconds. So it is a whole fourth faster, which is pretty nuts. Or essentially 25% faster at producing villagers, which is absolutely crazy. But with that second town center from Lucifron, it looks like it's going to go down this forward deer, which is a classic. Um, you'll be seeing Lucifron start to catch up, if not pull ahead, very shortly. Now, this deer is making, eh, it's, it's being a little bit annoying, but nothing too really spooky. Uh, this barbican is able to pick it off slowly but surely once ever it passes it. We have wheelbarrow coming out for this, and we also say lots of safe food over here for 3DB, which does play a role sometimes in this matchup. If you have to start expanding to berries over, like over here, for instance, or deer that's a little bit farther out, you're very susceptible to night raids, so it's very, very important to get those sheep cooking back home. A little barbecue action, a little Kansas City barbecue action. Whatever your preference is. I don't have a strong preference. I just like barbecue. Uh, anyways, um, it's super important to get as many sheep as humanly possible because look at how safe this food is, right? This Imperial official is not in danger at all. Um, what do we have? Oh, we have a scout attacking. We love that for the scout, making the best effort it possibly can. Here's some early spears to prevent any harassment coming down. We would expect to see knights start to pop out of this stable um, pretty soon for Lucifron. And also, do we see an archery range back here? Oh, another stable. I like that. Actually, I do, I do like that. It's going to be able to pump out lots and lots of knights for Lucifron, which would be really, really good. As you can see, we already have six villagers on the gold. Oh, no, I forgot to do this. Sorry, guys. I'm so sorry. I, next time, I will. I promise. I promise. There's the archery ranges. There they're coming down. It look, it's looking like we're going to see a 2TC into Feudal Age all-in from Lucifron here. Um... B is not seeing this just yet. We have this one scout hanging out over here. Um, we do have the wall coming in up here, which is going to be very, very nice. Uh, only spearmen, though, on the map, though, for B. We do see a, a lot of people going for stone. So looking to get that up as quickly as possible. We do have the Imperial official over here. I believe Luzfran was able to see this mass on stone. So knows that this timing actually attack is going to actually probably be pretty pretty decent let's see if b has those micro slash macro mechanics to hold this off we're gonna see shuganu soon i just don't know when um let's see where you where you lot going you're going back to back to trees and you guys are going to build this i'm assuming over here to protect these two golds no it's an absolute fake out b is floating Oh, it's down over here. I'm so dumb. Somehow I missed that, but that is where the stone went. On the backside deer. I actually really like this. It's super protected, but also protects even more food resources for B. So usually that's where the, the biggest uh, pain point would be for the Chinese player, but not in this matchup. I really love how B is playing this currently. Now, we do see the flood of archers and knights coming out for Lucifron and an 11 to 7 advantage. We're going to need to see Shuganu very, very soon. Another wall going in, which I really, really do like. Uh, it's going to push them right into this Barbican, and that 
China build speed is absolutely crazy. Now, normally China could hold this pretty easily, but with these archers, they're not gonna be able to hold it nearly as easily as it would be if it was pure knights, which is why it's so, so important to get these archers. Not only that, you guys wanna get these archers so you can start pumping down those spears when they make something out of nothing. Bees walling up yet again, just making as many obstacles as humanly possible. Uh, that way they have to curl all the way back around here to prevent him from his safe food not being taken. But he's already moved everyone back here to the deer for it to be as safe as humanly possible. Loose front is bashing down the front door, desperately looking to get in and cause a little bit of mischief. B is doing a great job at keeping all these things up and about. And yeah, I really, really enjoy this play out of loose front and on B. Honestly, both are playing super, super well. Here comes the Shuganu. As you can see, you can really start to spam these things once you get a solid economy. B does have a current lead of about four, but that might be able to change pretty soon. There's a the Shuganu. There's the range one armor. I mean, I swear to God, I didn't watch this beforehand. I just casted this matchup so many times. <laughs> so I knew it was going to happen. Um, but between these two players, I knew something spicy, some spicy gameplay was going to come out of it. And I heard this game in particular was super, super good. So I'm very interested to see what goes down right now. We have these knights coming in. You do not want them to charge into those spears, which one of them did, but this is what these archers are so important. As you can see, the back and forth micro is absolutely critical. Um, I will say the Chinese also have a hand cannon emplacement uh, for all of their TCs and Barbicans, so they're shooting absolute seeds at everyone. The Tom Brady's of town centers is the Chinese one for sure. Now, a tower is going to be able to go up almost instantly because this is the Chinese build speed. Um, I will say these archers are going to get very, very nice. They're going to see, which is going to cause these knights to go in. We might finally lose our first villager. B's only lost one villager this entire harassment, which is absolutely insane. There goes down the second one, but does get a knight, which is super, super nice. And now this tower is up and going. Here it goes. Uh, we're going to see emplacements, uh, hand cans that's coming out for sure. There they are. Going to be able to do plenty of damage to these knights. And then on top of that, really gaining a nice sizable front line as well. We have hand cans that's going down again. Is there another tower out in the map? Um, oh, over here as well. So this wood line is going to be super, super safe. Um, as you can see, B has cut through a little bit of a piece, which means that they can technically come in this way. I will say they, they don't want to do that at all because that's a very big choke point. But I'm loving how B is protecting himself. As you can see how he has aligned his base to be very, very compact and really preventing a, a all-in from loose front. I wouldn't be surprised. Oh, and here they come. Here they come. The gremlins have been called. 18 are sprinting across the map at all costs. And this is when the all-in will come. All of a sudden, you go from essentially even armies to plus 18 I will say, it looks like some of the squad was forgotten back here. Um, does that look like 18? Is that 18? Or I'm just blind. Like, I mean, it doesn't really look like 18, but it might not be. So it does look like, unfortunately, for Lucifron, the Kremlins got a little bit misrallied. Um, Going to lose some early on, which is not what you want to see. They are free units, and the Shuganu have just finally gotten plus one. So Lucifron's going to have to wait for his plus one to go through, or else this fight's going to be not very advantageous for him. But the longer he waits, the longer these three archery ranges are pumping out Shuganu. And these knights are not going to stand a chance into this match, into this mass. And here we go. They're starting to dive, but B's playing it very, very smart, letting the tower do a lot, of, a lot of damage to these early gremlins. The gremlins are providing a great front line. The knights are looking for a way in. We have all these villagers just casually mining gold as this goes down. These two full towers, though, are playing a huge critical role, and the Shuganu are able to kite backwards. The archers are not doing much at all, and they're being focused down by these towers. And the knights are doing their absolute best to get into the Shuganu, but only a few spears remain. That's all you really need into knights, which is why it's so, so important for these archers to um, cut down this front line. Because if they don't, as you can see, once the Shuganu get onto this back line, they're anti, um, they're anti range, and they do so, so well. The knights do take them a little bit of time to get through, but as you can see, this is why this unit is so, so powerful. And that super upgraded tower is doing so, so much damage to Luzfran's army. And that was a huge, 
Huge stop by B there. We do have two ramps coming out. It will, I will say, I think B was able to see that, so he's going to continue to mass. We have 14 Chukunu on the way out of three archery ranges. We have another one in the backside here as well. This is how good um, these players really are. Look at the amount of things they're producing. And B is hitting a critical mass of Chukunu already. It's getting very, very scary. And we're throwing down three more archery ranges. As you can see, off of two TCs, you can just start to spam these guys. And this is honestly why some of the pros have a uh, kind of a beef with these guys. I will say I will drop the uh, win rates pretty soon, but um, it's absolutely insane. There's been constant action besides that front part where I tried to do my best to articulate how this matchup would go down. But now we get to see the two ramps coming in on this one wall. They might loop around. They might not. We'll see how it goes and where they're going to target. They're gonna looks like they're going to target this... Um, this tower right over here. The Shuganu are in absolute mass. As you can see, the villagers have been pulled to do tons and tons of damage. The ram is doing the ram dance in the middle of the map, and nothing it can really do. It's just completely blocked by these Shuganu. The Shuganu are deciding to be their own front line. They go, you know what? It doesn't even matter. I will say five villagers have gone down, but now we have a 46 Shuganu mass, which is going to be able to push out across the map and do some damage to Lucifron. Let's see if I'm going to be able to get a quick water break in here. Are these Shuganu going to chase down this entire army this whole time? It looks like it's the latter. As you can see, the boys are coming from the back. Here they come. They have arrived, and that's a lot of Shuganu that Loose Friends not going to be able to do anything with. Absolutely roasting these archers. Um, as you can see, these three bolts just absolutely peppering them. Even with the plus one armor, it's really no damage and no use at all. And Honestly, these Shuganu do so well, even into knights, which is what makes them so, so scary. As you can see, they're absolutely peppering these knights down, which is still a very good trade at this point for B, because um, he has a complete mass at this point. And if he can take out these knights, B's going to be able to turn onto these archers. And once he turns onto these archers, it is all over. These Shuganu will absolutely rip them apart. I will say, a good use of militia there by Lucifron, making it so that he's able to push back this army and do a very, very nice trade into this, honestly. Because I will say the Shuganu are way more valuable than these archers themselves, but the Shuganu have finally cleared out the knights, and now they are on the counterattack. We're moving forward and knowing that there's nothing they can really do into this. Knights are being pumped out as quickly as possible, but there's now 50 Shuganu onto the map. And B, a little bit of a miss micro there, moving a little bit too far in. Or honestly, he might just not even care. And we, we're continually seeing this constant like kind of pullback and extension of these forces. I love the formation changes here from B to get the absolute best concave he possibly can on all these units the knights are being absolutely destroyed and now they're onto the archers and you can see they absolutely cook these archers this one knight is going to finally go down and here comes the shuganu onto the archers once they get onto those archers it is absolutely curtains we'll see if he decides to trade into onto these archers no he continues to trade in onto these knights the very very expensive and valuable units which is what he wants to get done as quickly as humanly possible because he knows that these archers can't do anything to him once he decides to move in still 42 shuganu out on the map they're absolutely getting wild with it it looks like loose front is almost out of wood in his first location and finally b is side to focus the archers just kidding he is now back onto the knights pulling back a little bit more uh, as to wait for some more arrivals as you can see the little blue blobs are moving across the map at all speed and this is absolutely insane constant battle that's what we love to see from the egc tournaments these guys are in tournaments they are playing at their absolute best and we're seeing it here a nice spread formation again focusing down these militia and knights this mass over here for loose front has been doing its absolute best to take this down but it really can't do anything into this many shuganus and here comes more knights being sacrificed for the cause for the greater good they're going down and they're getting absolutely skewered on the way out this is the most one of the most satisfying or annoying sounds in all of the game which is this three peppering fire from the shuganu if you're on the receiving end of it it's probably the most annoying thing ever and it looks like we might have be able to have a quick sip of water here we go and while I have a second to breathe, the Roos win rate in Conqueror and above in this matchup is at 53.8% over about 500 games. And for the larger at-hole match, the Roos are at a 
5.1% across all ranks across around 7,000 games. So not a super played matchup in lower ranks, but a very highly played matchup in the upper ranks. And that is because these two saves are very hard to use, but so, so good. Another another engage over here, we have the Knights falling in onto 3DB. We can see that 3DB is now in the Castle Age, as you saw that clock tower go up almost instantly with 32 workers on it. The Abbey of Trinity is now going up for Lucifron. Lucifron knows that he can get, there's some pretty easy relics over here, here, and on this side of the base, and maybe even this one. And if he can secure those early on, he's gonna be in a very, very good spot. There's the Abbey of Trinity going down over here. I will say, Lucifron's getting a little bit of a, uh, a little bit aggressive over here with these uh, secret berries. Um, and if, I mean, B is also trading places and this is also a hunting cabin right next door that's making three gold per minute. Um, just keeping an eye on these guys. We have B now continuing to dive um, because he has no care in the world. And these Shugunu are actually pretty good at diving, which is absolutely insane for archer units. Uh, as we can see, traditional longbows and stuff like that get absolutely wrecked by these TCs. But the Shuganu lasts actually surprisingly a long time, which is absolutely terrifying if you are the Roost player in this situation. They're just roaming the base looking for any stragglers to just take a few shots and pot shots out. We see that B is starting to move over to the right hand side. It looks like the Shuganu were able to find this mass over here, killing seven villagers. And now B sees what he's going for, but it looks like these knights are going to be able to push this army back. I don't think there's enough here for B to take out this mass, which is why I believe he's just turning and burning. Um, decides to take a few pot shots, but as you can see, the Shugunu are starting to go down pretty quickly. With these Castle Age archers on the backhand side, we have a few palace guards being thrown into the mix. We're going to be able to fall back to the safety of this tower. Hopefully all these villagers decide to dip out, or else Lucifer going to have an absolute field day. It does look like we're getting some emplacements and stuff going on. The villagers have decided to take the battle themselves, which is a absolute bold move. Um, I will say maybe a misclick there. Um, I'm not really sure, but I mean, they did fend off the knights, did lose five villagers. But at this point, B doesn't really care about those villagers, it seems like, with over 126 purchased and made and delivered. Um... These villagers are getting crazy value. We have the farm transition back here, but what is this? We have Lucifron move this very ambitious berry bush down to the bottom side of the map. We have 16 villagers right next to the farms. No one has seen these two. They're just working in absolute secrecy. No one knows anything about what. And they're kind of just hanging out. It's like almost like a mutual gentleman's agreement. Um, I'm not going to touch you. You're not going to touch me. I will say Lucifron's floating about as much as a keep could go and we'll see if that's the case we have more and more farms coming down now lose front sees this so both sides must see this now at this point um this cannot be a surprise so we'll see what lose front decides to do i will keep checking <gasps> the keep drop on the on the farms this is absolutely insane we see that b with these Two nest of bees has decided to take a forward position. We have barracks coming in up front. I'm assuming for palace guards, but it looks like these Shuganu plus nest of bees are able to rip through this army for Lucifron. I will say we'll keep an eye on that back of that base and how many villagers are going to go down due to that keep popping up in the farmland, in the homeland of B, which is absolutely insane. But B has taken a very forward position and done a lot of really, really good damage at this point to Lucifron. Lucifron is really struggling to keep up at the current moment. Um, and while, yes, this is super annoying, um, and honestly, incredibly, incredibly annoying, Lucifron is also just getting more stone, which he doesn't really need at the current moment. And that's a lot of villagers, honestly, of his 107, just focusing on stone, while B currently has 52 villagers on this central gold mine, which is absolutely incredible. We have these hunting cabins, which are making some money, not enough. We have the Abbey of Trinities with all three relics, plus another one on the way, which is huge for Lucifron. That is a passive 199 gold per minute. So definitely super, super important and would highly, highly recommend um, you start to utilize and get as much relics as possible. Um, that's just something that I, I didn't learn early on, but you can easily win early on in lower levels if you just grab the relics. Now, we have a keep drop for B coming down as well in their base 
which is absolutely insane. Another monster going down. Super unfortunate that this Abbey of Trinity is right here, because once these relics drop, that relics will be absolutely useless. They'll be on the ground in front of a keep. This keep over here has done a good job at killing a farm, but that's about it. We have B still cruising through the middle of the map. We have these Shuganu taking down this monastery as, you know, as what they would normally do. Um, these are so, so good at actually taking down um, buildings as well, which makes them so, so powerful. We have 17 crossbowmen in the mix as well. So these knights will get absolutely evaporated if they get anywhere close. We have spearmen, and now we also have palace guards, including three nest of bees. As you can see, with the Shuganu plus crossbowmen army, these knights are absolutely fanning themselves to death it's not going to happen nothing's going to happen over here we have now palace guards going through b is in an incredible spot right now with these and we have forward farms look at this he said you take away my farms in the backside. no worries at all i'm going to take away your farms and your relics because here comes down two monasteries i'm assuming to steal this relic and this relic which is absolutely insane we have lucifron holding a bunch of idle villagers in the middle here um i don't really see where his forces are a farm transition is going on the back side. Oh, his forces have decided to move out and do a little counter push on the backhand side. B has decided to put down a very few nice couple of forward keeps. We have even have the Imperial official. I will say these villagers are going to be absolutely out for no good. Loose Front has killed 30 villagers at this point. This is actually a very, very good raid. B's not able to see it very often. Um, another knight's going to go down. But I will say, once this goes down, it's going to be a huge uh, turn in the tides. His loose front is pretty much dependent on those relics to make it a halfway decent gold income. As you can see, B's economy is absolutely popping off. And he's building a essentially a pseudo base in line over here. They're trying to die this Barbican, but the Barbican's actually doing a, a good job at slaughtering all these um, archers. Archers are not very good at actually doing much about anything when it comes to diving a base or doing lots of damage. Shukanu are far better at doing this task. As you can see, the Nest of Bees is now focusing down this Abbey of Trinities. Another relic was stolen and is going to be placed in the safety of Bees' forward base. I absolutely love that he put his farms near his army. And you can see the blue blobs heading across the map trying to support their leader, is in B. B is losing a lot of villagers on the backhand side, but as I mentioned before, these archers are really, really tough. They're not very good at diving anything. So this Abbey of Trinity is going to go down eventually to this keep slash with the... Um, it has all sorts of things. It's now getting a spring hole in placement as well. So I wouldn't be surprised if we see that. I think B is going to go back to clear out this army to probably stop annoying him. And then move on from there with this Shuganu slash um, crossbowman mass now b is sitting in a very very good spot i will say if there's ever a time for loose front to snipe these nest of bees it's right now obviously he doesn't know that nothing is over there he would just normally run in and take these out with those knights that he has but once this abbey of kings goes abbey of the trinity goes down it's gonna be really really rough for lucifron we can see the mutual agreement as again going down but we do see that b is stopping the mutual agreement and going to target all these villagers another keep drop going in and we have a ram back here um don't really know why but we have some forward villagers again trying to take down whatever they can loose front using anything he possibly can to make this go and it does look like an absolute slaughter happened over here 47 villagers killed for loose front 29 for b but b is in the absolute driver's seat and i'm still loving these forward farms and there we go the relics are out, which means that this one, this one monk is going to be busy. Oh, another monk is over here helping him out. Going to be busy collecting everything he possibly can. As you can see, another keeps goes down to make it almost impossible for there any raids to go down because these Chinese keeps are pretty juiced with those Tom Brady hand cannon slits. Now, production buildings are going down over here for Lucifron. He's being choked out of all resources besides food because he's a nice farm transition. I will say they're moving in on these trebuchets trying to take out this keep because um, this would allow them to take out the forward position. A siege workshop is going down for B, which means I'm sure some spring holds are going to start to pop out right out front. But that being said, we do have B in onto their farms, loose Franz farms, 
So doing a little bit of counterplay on the backhand side over here. B is reinforcing with Palace Guards, which is so, so nice. The Song Dynasty is still in play. Usually we see the next um, Dynasty go down, which we might see with the Imperial Palace. And once this dings, I think Luce Front is going to know that he's in a deep trouble. There's the Yon Dynasty, which makes those Palace Guards even better. That movement speed goes a bit crazy. And we have Shukunu still doing absolute work on the backhand side. A little bit of a misclick there by Luce Front, getting absolutely slaughtered for these villagers. Uh, you're going to move them a little bit or something. We have palace guards on the backhand side. Death by a thousand cuts or a thousand raids from B. I still love this forward farm transition into a fort. Uh, it does look like this keep on the backhand side was able to fully kill out these farms. But that's about it. As I mentioned before, these archers have nothing on the Shugnu or crossbowmen. They're obviously more valuable than crossbowmen in the 1v1 battle. But into this, they're nothing. And the Shuganu only taking out one at a time with that mango shot is not going to cut it at this point. And that knight is going to run into a lot of armor shredding ability. A nice mango shot there. But it looks like B is just taking an absolute slaughter on all these villagers. And we do have archers trying to dive in the back line over here. Loose front stopping the complete usage of these farms over here but this keep is still staying up and once these knights go down there's nothing that the archers can really do they cannot take out this keep in time and lucifron calls gg what an absolutely insane match b played this so so well with the counter keep drop into farm transition in his base we absolutely love that and b was able to also single-handedly stop that early push if you have enjoyed this video if you have enjoyed this cast please do subscribe drop a like go check out the egc when they go live on the weekends and i hope you guys like the new logo if you do um and you made it this far leave it uh, in the comments if you like it or you're not um again as always um be nice if not but i uh, hope you guys appreciate that and more stuff on the way to improve the channel um I'm just having an absolute blast, so I hope you guys have a great night.